Consumer Confidential with KTLA's David Lazarus. Hi, David. A good day for Tesla investors? Uh, well, I mean, it's a mixed bag, and it requires a little bit of explanation. What we're talking about is a stock split. And if you're not familiar with those are, what that means is uh, the three-for-one stock split that Tesla implemented right after the closing bell today, ding, 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 means that for every share that a current Tesla shareholder now has, they're going to get two others. Three for one. That's the idea here. Now, that's not unusual. This happens frequently. What uh, Tesla is doing is saying that this is going to create more opportunities for Tesla employees to have equity in the company. And that might be the case, but that's kind of not really what's going on here. At this point, uh, Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, is trying to raise funds as quickly as he can in case he's on the hook for that $44 billion acquisition of Twitter. He needs to have financing there, and he's using a lot of his Tesla shares to do that. That. So what this three for one stock split does is it dilutes the existing shares that are out in the marketplace, thus making the price go down without impacting the market value of the company overall, because that hasn't changed. Now there's just more shares in circulation. This in turn should make retail investors, in other words, you and me, more uh, accessible for buying these shares as opposed to the institutional investors that don't really look at the price so much. So this is a way to bring more individual investors into the playing field and to get them to buy up Tesla shares, and it creates the impression that they're more affordable, but you're basically just getting less for your money. So that's what uh, is really happening here. Again, not unusual, but it's clearly a way for Tesla to try and get some money in quickly. Their last one was a very unusual five-for-one stock split back in 2020, also a time when Tesla needed to raise some cash. Mm. Well, the way it used to go is you move to the suburbs to get cheaper rent, but that's not the case anymore, is it? No, and that's really interesting, and that, I think, is an offshoot now of the transition into remote or hybrid work. As Mark correctly says, it used to be that you would live out in the suburbs, perhaps save a little money on your rental costs, but according to a new study from Realtor.com, the difference between urban and suburban rental prices is shrinking, thus meaning that you got more and more people working remotely from the suburbs. That has pushed up rental costs costs out there. So overall, what we're looking at is uh, a, a total median uh, nationwide of about $1,900 a month in rental costs as of July. And the difference between suburban and urban areas, not as, as stark as it once was. And that's a big, big difference. Overall, July rents uh, were still up by double digits, almost straight across the board nationwide. In case you're wondering, the median in, July, in LA in July about 3,000 bucks. That is up by about 13% from a year before. Whereas if you were planning to say live in Riverside or San Bernardino as a suburban play, not so much there. The median over in those places, about 2,600. Not a big difference now. Mm. And what's going on with Movie Pass? They're back. Oh, <laughs> it turns out, which is kind of a, a strange thing because this is sort of a walking dead phenomenon, or let's call it a reboot to be generous. Movie Pass collapsed in 2019 after basically failing to come up with a business model that worked. When it was originally unveiled in 2017, the pitch to consumers was, "You give us 10 bucks a month, and we will give you credits and underwrite your movie going, so you can basically go to see a movie a day." Sounds great until you realize, no, they're just basically underwriting people's movie going and they weren't able to leverage that into other forms of revenue and thus they were just burning through cash until finally the company collapsed. Now one of the original co-founders, a fellow who was pushed out in 2018, is back after buying MoviePass out of bankruptcy and he says that come next month it's back but he's not really revealing a lot of details yet. Apparently there will be three tiers, $10 a month, $20 a month, and $30 a month. Each of those will come with a certain amount of credits we don't know yet to subsidize your movie going. You can be sure the credits are not going to be as generous as they were in the past because that just simply wasn't sustainable. Will consumers come out and do this again? Well, it's a different landscape out there. Right now, movie ticket uh, box office proceeds are down about 30% from where we were pre-pandemic. Also, you've got a number of theater chains that have launched their own subscription programs, plus Regal Cinema now looking at bankruptcy, AMC also finding financial headwinds out there, and finally, 
consumers have kind of gotten a hold of streaming video as the new way to entertain the whole family, a lot cheaper than going out to the movies. So good luck with all that movie pass, but it remains to be seen if you found a business model that's going to work. I have more on this right now at KTLA.com. Oh, okay, great. Mm. Tom Cruise should start making more movies then if they want that model to keep going. Done and done. Yes. Done and done. <laughs> right. Indeed. David, great Thanks, to David. see you. Thanks.